Hey, shalom, everybody. Good morning. Just getting, just getting things set up in order. Plug it into the wall. Oh, the camera will, shall never die. I'm trying a new tea here. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's pretty suspect. This tea tastes like nothing. I'll tell you that. It's the blandest tea. Whoop. Maybe it came after. Okay, it's all right. Came after. It's all good. Shalom, most high Christ blessed. We're going to get started in just a second here. All right. We're going to get started in just a second. Well, you know what? Rather, let me move this, this away. You're gonna have to keep the thing faced us because we want to be able to see if it goes in and out or focus or anything. Um, what am I looking for here? Good morning, good morning. One, two, three, four, testing one, two, three. Shalom, shalom. Maybe you could turn the speakers down. Cause I'm, I don't think they can need to hear from the speakers. So. If you turn that, yeah, if you turn this, the, these speakers down, it'll still catch it through the system, right? You know what I'm saying? Hey, Messiah Christ bless y'all. We're going to get started in just a second. Chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. I just want to tell the truth. And take a moment to be real if that's okay with you. I just want to tell the truth And take a moment to be real If that's okay yeah. If that's okay with you Yeah I just want to tell How my people really, I really feel Facebook, No one lies, here's the truth And I'm going to share it well I so shine my light on my enemies I like show and tell When we step time. up to what's right They lock us in the cell Ain't no bell, what the hell the system's made for us to fail that's Can't you see the modern day Slavery is in the field Slaves is in the Bible Yeah, like ain't no fairy tale Trying to kill my people All these murder kings and taco bells I was funny I work for my enemies When I need, I buy from my enemies And I go where I go All eyes on me Maybe it's because I keep my friends on me Now do you like that? Like that, the Israelites gon' fight back, fight back. Cause my said you're coming right back, right back. You ain't gon' know what to do. I just wanna tell the truth. Shush. Okay, I'm saying, I'm not saying that. That's not the speaker. That's a mission. Talking about the speakers. Can you turn them off? I'm sure you can. 
I don't know why you like hesitating. What's, what's the problem? Y'all pray for IT, man. They, they be... Woo! Woo! So does it still pick up? Yeah, okay, okay. Right. I thought so. You know, you know I'm an audio engineer, so I, I, know, I know how to do this stuff. I'm sure you can turn the speakers off and see what it picks up. Those are just output sources. Don't have nothing to do with input. Hmm. Next thing I'm looking for. Yeah. What you gonna do? Yeah, maybe, maybe back a little bit. It's all, it's all in my blood. Now it looks cool. Maybe, maybe spread the, maybe spread the, maybe spread the legs all the way out. It's a, and then go down some. Yeah, stretch the legs all the way out. Yeah, because that thing is... That thing, that thing made me look real cool. Alright, I think that, that's, that's better. That's better, that's better. Alright, you know, you get it, you get it, you get it, brother. You got my love. All right. You are now flying. So fly. You got my love. I'm keeping your word, keeping your laws. That is enough to show you that I'm ready. All right, all right, all right. All right, all praises to the most high. All right, I got to use this mic because, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens here. All right. So, Shalom family, Shalom family, how, how do I sound? Do I sound good? Do I sound good? All right, that's one yes. Okay, all praises. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, today we're going to be reading Matthew's the 19th chapter and giving the understanding. So I pray, uh, and I pray you all get something from today's class. We're going to start in Matthew 19 and verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 1. Hold on. Can y'all hear the reader good? Can y'all hear the reader good? I just want to make sure because uh, he's over there. All right, the reader's good. Okay, read it. Matthew chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? So now the Pharisees came and tempted him, and they asked him a question. They said, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Go ahead. And he answered and said unto them, 
Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh? It says, And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Where is this written? Go to Genesis. All right. This is written in Genesis 2 and 20. All right. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 20. And Adam. Yeah. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam... There was not found an help meet for him. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. That's the part that we want. So what happened? Read. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Hey, you know what? You notice it didn't say uh, uh, Adam didn't have an equal partner. He needed an equal partner. You notice it didn't say that. You notice it didn't say. He needed somebody to come tell him what to do. You notice it didn't say he needed somebody to remind him to take out the trash. You notice it didn't say he needed somebody to talk his head off. He needed a help meet. He needed a help meet. <laughs> Read that part again. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs... And close up the flesh instead thereof. Mm -hmm. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. You notice the man wasn't made and then brought to the woman. It says the woman was made and then she was brought to the man because the woman was made for the man. That's the way it was. That's the way it was done. The woman was made for the man. Get where is that at? New Testament. Because see these see, some of these Christians, these Christ, these Christian black women, they don't want to hear that. Okay. Where is that? In, is that in First Corinthians? Huh? Yeah, First Corinthians eleven. Yeah, read that real quick. First Corinthians eleven. What, what verse? One thirty-seven. Uh, yes. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. Come on. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. Read. But the woman is the glory of the man. But the woman, she's the glory of the man, because she was made from man. Read. For that's, the, what, that's what woman means. It means out of man. Read. For the man is not of the woman, uh -huh. but the woman of the man. But the woman is of the man, read. Neither was the man created for the woman. See, we got to get back to the Bible. You see that? It says, neither was the man created for the woman, read. But the woman for the man. You see that? But the woman was created for the man. See, that's what we got to understand. The woman was created for for the man. So that means the purpose that the man has set out for his household is the woman's role to follow and help him see it through. Not to come and combat him every step of the way. Not to come and fight him every step of the way. Man. <laughs> Let's go back to Genesis. Verse 23. Genesis chapter 2 verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Uh-huh. She shall be called woman. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man. Because the word woman means out of man. Taken out of man. That's what the word woman means. So the woman, so they, they always want to know, well, you came from a woman. Okay, but a man had to put the baby there. <laughs> a man had to put the baby there. And the first woman was made from a man. That's just what it is. See, these new age feminists, 
They don't like that type of stuff right there. What about you feminist Christians out there? Y'all don't like the Bible. Y'all don't like the Bible. That's okay. That's okay. The Bible's going the Bible's going to prevail anyway. Uh read on. Verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife mm -hmm. and they shall be one flesh. You see that? It says, therefore shall man leave his father and mother and, and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Meaning when the, when the woman gets married to a husband, she is now on one accord with her husband following what he is establishing and setting up. I heard a woman say, uh, tell a woman for being submissive, she's setting uh, men back or she's setting women back 50 years. She said, you setting women back 50 years with all this submissive talk. She said her response was, well, I think that women were a lot smaller 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that thing was that thing had me laughing, man. That thing had me laughing. All right, go back to where we was at in uh, Matthew 19. Matthew, verse 5. Chapter 19, verse 5. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, mm -hmm. and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. You see that? That's the same quote that, uh, that Moses wrote. Okay, read. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. There are no more twain, but one flesh. It is no 50-50. Okay, read. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Now, let me talk about that part right there. It says, therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Let no man put asunder. Meaning what? Some of y'all's relationships, God didn't join together. Some of y'all relationships... Marriages, God did join together. Some of y'all repent and come into the truth and you got an ungodly spouse, a wicked spouse. God didn't join that together, okay? Some of y'all come into the truth, you wake up and you understand who you are and you start to keep God's commandments, but your spouse gives you hell every step of the way. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 7 and 10. Your spouse gives you hell every single step of the way. God didn't join that together. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Uh -huh. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. So this is what uh, Christ was going into, talking about divorce. The wife should not depart from her husband. Read. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. But if she decides to leave from her husband, let her remain unmarried. See, you women, you can't just go get a new man. Not, not, not according to the Bible, you can't. Not according to Jesus, you can't. You can't just leave your husband because you don't like the way he tell you what to do. You don't like the fact that he's establishing order. You don't like that he's correcting your wicked behind. Now you think that you could just go get another man. Now you can't go get another man. Nah, you can't go get another man. You got the man you need right there because he going to check that wicked behind. See, in America, you could just go get you another man. The woman, she's not happy with her husband. She's just going to get another one. No, 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 no. In the Bible, that's called adultery. And your wicked behind will be judged. You will be judged. Because a woman is not made to be going from man to man to man to man. That's why you sisters are crazy as hell. You sisters who've been with 15, 20, 30 men and wonder why you can't be stable in your mind. Because you didn't have too many spirits on you. Mm. You didn't have too many spirits of different men on you. Now you all bugged out. You got the, uh, you got the woman. She mad because her McDonald's order didn't come out in time. So she went at McDonald's and made a McMess. Hmm? <laughs> she done threw a full tantrum, threw, a, threw throwing stuff down, kicking the shake machine. And then on her way out, after making a damn mess, you know what she decided to do? What? She twerked oh, yeah. on her way out. Good shit. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. The black woman is insane in the membrane. 
I can guarantee you that that woman has had multiple sexual partners and has made her crazy. Mm -hmm. She done went crazy. All right, read that again. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Meaning you can't just go get another man. If you decide to leave your husband, keep your legs closed. Keep your legs closed. Read. Or be reconciled to her husband. And the only man you're going to get is the man you had once before. Go back to that man. Go back to him. Reconcile with him. Tell him, I'm sorry. I'll be submissive. I'll, I'll listen. I'll listen this time. <laughs> Read on. And let not the husband put away his wife. But the husband can't just put out his wife either. Read. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. Uh huh. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not. Now you got a woman and she does not believe, brothers. All right? You got a woman she don't believe. Read. And she be pleased to dwell. You know what pleased to dwell means? Pleased to dwell means she loves you so much and she wants to be with you. She'll do the commandments of God. She'll follow you into the truth. And she'll uphold the standards that you're setting in the house based upon the Bible. Not because she just believes in God so much and she's so holy. No, she's doing it because she loves you and she wants to have that relationship with you and she understands that this is going to bring up, bring forth happiness in our marriage. So she says, you know what? I'm going to be pleased to dwell. I'm, I'm pleased with you keeping the commandments. Let's do this as a family. Okay, read on. And she be pleased to dwell with him. Let him not put her away. See, you don't have to put a woman like that away because she's compliant. She's submissive. She's going along with what you set up. She's in one of mine and one accord with you. And that's fine. Read. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not. Come on. And if he be pleased to dwell with and her. sometimes the woman will come into the truth first and the husband won't believe. But he'll be pleased to dwell. Meaning he'll do everything required in order to maintain that relationship. Okay, if I don't keep these commandments... Me and her are not going to be able to be together, but I love her. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep the commandments. We've seen situations like this, coming, people coming to the truth like this, and eventually the man starts to catch on. The man starts to catch on, and the spirit jumps on. The spirit jumps on the man. Now he's, he, becomes, he starts prophesying. He's starting being able to teach. Okay, he gets built up. We've seen these things. All right, read on. Let her not leave him. Don't leave him. All right. But see, you know what some people do? They'll come into the truth and they'll see another bro another brother or another sister, and yeah, they got a they got a spouse that don't believe, but they're they're trying, they're working on it. You know what I'm saying? They're building up slowly, but they ain't moving fast enough for you. And you see this other brother, and you see this other sister, and you want them, so you 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 kick you kick them to the curb real quick. You become real impatient with them because you see somebody else you want. Don't be like that. That's wicked. It's evil. Don't be that way. All right? Be patient. Be patient. Give them time. Just as the Lord gave you time, give them time to get themselves together. And if they get themselves together, then that's your wife. That's your husband. But if not, if they decide, you know what, one day, I don't want to do this. You know, I, I've been half I've been half stepping up for a while. I've been faking it. It just, it just ain't working for me. Okay, then. All right, read. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, mm -hmm. and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean. And that's and that's what the battle a lot of our people going through that have women, uh, uh, that that had women outside the truth and had children with them, and now you're trying to bring your kid. You listen, your kids, your kids are unclean. There's nothing you're going to be able to do. Okay, no, twenty years, hell no, that's too long. So this is the thing. A sister asked, she said, how long should you wait? How much time? 20 years? Ah, no, sister, not 20 years. Okay. These questions cannot be answered over the internet. I don't know you. I don't know your situation. Every situation is different. So what you would need to do is you would need to go to your local congregation and get counsel that will be tailored to your specific situation. This, there's not a one size fits all thing. Some people may be six months. Some people may be two years, okay? A spirit may be trying, and you can't just cast them out for trying, but it still may not work out in the end, or it may work out in the end, but you got to put in that full effort and give them a chance. 
See, some people don't want to give him a chance because mm -hmm. you can't stand that Negro's guts. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is what it is. But if they're putting forth effort to try to keep the commandments, be patient with them. But ultimately, you need to go to your local congregation and receive some counsel. All right. Now, what was we at? Uh, Reversing. All right, read that. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Else were your children unclean, but now, uh, now they are holy. So once, once the husband and the wife are on the same page, this proves that being pleased to dwell doesn't mean that they don't bother you while you keep the commandments and they do what they want to do. No, because then the kids will be confused because daddy's doing this and mama's doing something else. Okay, the kids will be confused. This shows that being pleased to dwell, meaning they both agree on keeping the commandments in the household and teaching the children to follow that standard. That's what pleased to dwell means. So now the children are clean because now y'all are on one accord. Y'all are on the same page. The same holy days are being kept. Not one person's doing Christmas and the other one's doing uh, Hanukkah. Or one person's doing Easter and the other one's doing Passover. No, everybody in the house is keeping Passover. Everybody in the house is keeping Feast of First Fruits. Everybody in the house is keeping Tabernacles. All right? So now the children are clean. But the children become unclean when one parent is doing Christmas, the other parent is doing uh, um, Feast of Dedication. Okay? So that's unclean. That's confusion. All right? The child's going to grow up confused, not knowing what they should do. All right? Read on. Else were your what? Else were your children unclean, mm -hmm. but now are they holy. Uh -huh. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. But if that unbelieving spouse leaves, let him leave. Read. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. You got to read into the mic for the OBS. <laughs> How long are you doing that? <laughs> All right. Read it again. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. Right. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. Because why? When you uh, uh, when you are dealing with an unbelieving wife, we're in, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And what verse was that? Verse 15. Verse 15. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. I thought Baruch was scribing, but uh, I don't know what happened to him. Huh? It was. Yeah. All right. So somebody scribe, please. So we could stay up uh, on the up and up. Okay. Now read that verse again. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. See, you're not bound to that spirit because God didn't join that confused marriage together. God didn't join an unbeliever and a believer together. God didn't join that together. Read. But God hath called us to peace. God called us to be in peace and harmony in our marriages. If there's no peace in the marriage, y'all need to go get some counsel. Okay? Don't just start making rash decisions and breaking up marriages and doing all this type of stuff without counsel. Before you, before you depart, get some counsel. But see, a lot of times, people already got their mind made up on what they want to do. So the counsel, the counsel come from their own mind. And then next thing you know, you're in trouble. You didn't caught up. All right. Now, um, from there, go back to where we was at. Matthews 19 and 6. Matthew chapter 19, verse 6. Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. Mm -hmm. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Right. God didn't join confusion together. Okay. He joined. He, 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 God called us unto peace. Read. Then say unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? It says, why then did Moses command to give a writing of divorcement to be able to put a woman away? Give me that. Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy. That's 24. Deuteronomy 24 verse 1. The bill of divorce. This is what Moses, this is what Christ is quoting, where he got it from. 
All right, Deuteronomy 24. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24, verse 1. Uh -huh. When a man has taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes. He don't like her no more. Because he has found some uncleanness in her. There's something about her he don't like no more. The, the, he, he's got, uh, what's it called? <laughs> it's called post-nut clarity. Damn. <laughs> That's what he's got. That's what a lot of you brothers get. You brothers, you go out and you deal with a woman. And then after you, after you, after you complete, then all of the, all of the, the, all of the common sense starts to come back and you start to realize like, what the heck did I do? This woman ain't no wife material. This is just, she just looks nice. But outside of, outside of that, what do we have now? Nothing. I can't stand her guts. She don't know how to be quiet. She don't know how to be submissive. She don't know how to cook. She don't know how to do nothing outside of put it down in the bedroom. So you can't have sex 24 hours a day. So then what else you do? You stuck with a headache. So then brothers start to have that clarity after the fact. And then now they want to put her away. Now nah, I got to get me a real woman. I got to get me a woman that's going to be able to take care of me. There was a, there was a video I was watching about uh, a brother said, I think it might've been Kevin Samuels. He said, um, I might not have been Kevin Samuels. I can't remember. But it said, uh, sister, you could be fine as wine. You could be beautiful. And a man, he'll talk to you. He'll tie you. He'll take you out on a date. He may, he'll may, he set you up. Right? He'll do all these things to you. But at the end of the day, he won't marry you. He'll marry. You'll go out and get all of this surgery done, these tummy tucks, these butt lifts, all of this stuff done. And he's, he'll just hit it. He won't marry you. And he'll go marry a woman that looked like a Teletubby. Right. Because she's submissive. I can't remember who said that. Somebody said that. He said he'll go out and he'll marry the woman that's built like a Teletubby. She don't got all of the Brazilian butt lifts and the breast uh, uh, augmentations and all this uh, tummy tucks and butt lifts and stuff. She don't got all that surgery and stuff done that you done went through hell to get. But he won't marry you. He'll marry the woman who don't got all that stuff down. Her, uh, and she, instead of a well-set stomach, hers is rent, like the scriptures say. She got a belly on her. Her butt may not be as big, but her mouth, her mouth and the words that she can speak to her husband, she speak life into her man. She knows how to take care of a house. She knows how to treat her husband. She knows how to raise up children. She's marriage material. She's in, she has integrity. You know for a fact that if you leave the house, she's going to hold it down. She ain't going to be sneaking another Negro up in there while you're gone at work. Peace of mind. A peace of mind. But I'm telling you, a woman who, got, uh, who gets all that surgery done and all that stuff done to her body, you can, you, you're, you're not enough for her. You're not enough for her. One man ain't enough for her. She wants the attention, especially if you got a woman... Who you're with, you're with her in her natural state, and then she wants to go get butt done and breast done and lips and uh tummy tuck and all this type of stuff. She's you're not enough for her. She don't just want your attention and your validation. She wants the world's attention and validation. That's a wicked woman. Read this scripture again. When a man has taken a wife and married her. And it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes mm -hmm. because he has found some uncleanness in her. He don't like her no more. Then let him write her a bill of divorcement. See, Moses said you could write her a bill of divorcement. If you find something you don't like about her, write a bill of divorcement. Read. And give it in her hand. And put it in her hand. And send her out of his house. And put her out the house. <laughs> Go ahead. Here's your walking papers. <laughs> and when Read. she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. Then she's free to go marry another man. Read. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and giveth it in her hand and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. See, you know what a lot of people do in the black community? You'll leave your man... 
go deal with another dude. Mm -hmm. It don't work out. And now you want to go back to the original man. God said, no, 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 no. Don't do that. That's wicked. That's wicked. We all know somebody who done did some stuff like that. Don't do that. Nah, you done went and dealt with this other man. Nah, don't, don't try to come back. The only way you can come back and reconcile with your husband is if you didn't go out and deal with some other dude already. But we know some women, they can't keep their legs closed for a minute. The moment their husband don't show them no attention, they smiling all up in some Negro's face at work. The moment your husband starts traveling to push this truth, you looking for you looking for uh, 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 attention from some other ungodly nigga out there. Oh yeah, yeah, we know, we know, we've seen the stories, we've seen, we've seen not even the stories, we've seen the history, we've seen the history of the wicked woman, mm -hmm. husband traveling, putting in the work, raising up the twelve tribes of Israel, prophesying in many countries, and the wife is back home. Getting knocked down by some random dude. Ain't doing nothing. Evil. Straight up evil. Sister got a damn death waiting on her ass. Most high gonna put your ass to death. Um, read on. After that, she is defiled. For that is abomination before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. So this is this is what Moses gave unto the Israelites when we came out of Egypt, all right? We gave them this law concerning uh, uh, being able to put away a woman for any cause, all right? You found some type of uncleanness in her, you was, you was able to put her away. What's going on? Huh? No, it's going. Yeah, it's still going. It's recording right now. No, no, it, it continues. All right, go back to Matthews. Matthew 19. Read verse 8 again. Matthew 19, verse 8. Read verse 7 again. Verse 7. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? See, Christ is telling them divorce is not good. They're, you're not allowed to just divorce your wife. What God joined us together, let no man put asunder. So now they said, what? Why did Moses give, uh, why did Moses say in the law, you could give them a bill of divorce then? Right? Read. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. M Moses, Moses allowed you to do it because our hearts was wicked. He said, if I don't put this here, they ain't going to be able to keep this law. They ain't going to be able to keep this, the laws of marriage. So I got to put this here because of how stiff-necked and rebellious these people are. But what? But from the beginning, it was not so. But from the beginning, it was not so. Christ is letting them know. Look, from the beginning, it was not so. Christ came to uh, uh, magnify the law. Read the next verse. Verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. So the only way you can put your wife away, I'm talking about a believing woman. She was in the truth, wearing fringes, right? The only way you can put that woman away, ain't cause, not because she can't cook, mm -hmm. right? Not because she don't know how to uh, uh, take care of the kids, okay? Now it stopped. Automatically. Nah, stop. I don't know why. Hey, and there's a we could get a there's a button we could get too to remotely hit it again. What setting is it on? Because usually it just it just loops. Okay, whatever. It's fine. It says, uh, it says if you put your wife away. Except it be for fornication, meaning the only way you can put her away is if she starts to deal with another man. Yes, that goes into if she kiss another man. Oh, it's just a kiss. No, your ass is done. You gotta go. Mm. Uh she 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 uh she's sending nude pictures to a dude. That's fornication. He's sending nude pictures to her. Weenie pics. 
<laughs> you know, I've never been behooved to send a picture like that. I've just never been behooved to send a picture like that. I, I I don't know why dudes do it. You know, dudes be out there sending unsolicited meat pics. <laughs> I'm talking about unsolicited. Dude, sister didn't ask for it. Women don't ask for that stuff, and dudes just be sending it. Like she's going to say, oh, wow, what a fine specimen. Let me run over right now. <laughs> this world is sick, man. There's some sick people in this world. Uh, read that scripture again. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication. Except it be for fornication. She's dealing with another dude. And shall marry another. And she mar and you go out and marry another. So you put her away and now you married another. Read. Committeth adultery. Uh huh. And whoso marries. Because that's her. adultery. Because you can't put your woman away when she's done nothing wrong. And now she doesn't have the authority to go deal with another man. She goes deal with the other dude. She's in adultery. Because that's your wife. Read. And whoso marrieth her. Which is put away, doth commit adultery. So when you when you put away your wife and another dude come deal with her, that's still your wife. He's in the midst of adultery now. That's what Christ is saying. You can't do this thing. Okay? So Christ came to give a higher understanding of the law. He came to magnify the law. Why? Because he had the authority to do so. But the scribes and Pharisees, they always wanted to challenge Christ's authority. Okay, when he set up the laws, when he said, when he came and taught a higher understanding of the law, magnifying the laws of God, they didn't rock with that. They didn't like that because they couldn't keep the laws in the form that Moses gave it. So now that Christ is making it more difficult, they don't want to rock with it. But it was always prophesied that Christ was going to come and magnify the law. Give me that in Deuteronomy. 18. Start at verse 18. Christians talking about the law done away with. She ain't right. Christ came and magnified the law. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 18. Come on. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, mm -hmm. and will put my words in his mouth. God said, God's telling Moses, look, I'm going to raise up a prophet like unto you. He's going to be a savior and a deliverer of the people. And he's going to do what? And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. God said, I'm going to put my words in his mouth, and he's going to speak everything that I command him. Read. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Didn't Christ say, I, I come not in my own name? I come in the name of my father, which sent me. Didn't Christ say that? Where, where, where is that? Uh, go to John. It's in John chapter 9. Start up at verse... John chapter 9. Start at verse... Yeah, verse 3. John chapter 9, verse 3. Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Right. That the works of God shall be made manifest in him. Read. I must work the works of him that sent me. He said, Jesus said, I came to do the works of him that sent me. I'm not here to do my own thing. I'm not here to speak my own words. Read. While it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Did you see that? So he said, I must work the works of him that sent me. Christ had to do what the Most High sent him to do, what his father sent him to do. Now go to Matthew 17. Start at verse 1. Christ had the authority from the Most High to come bring the higher understanding of the law. All right. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. Come on. And after six days... Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. Mm -hmm. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them 
Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. So what's happening here is there's a tabernacle that was going to be made for Moses, which represents the law. One that will be made for Elijah, which will represent the prophets. And then one for Christ, which will be for the Son of God, right? So they wanted to make three tabernacles to make them equal to each other. But watch what happens. Read. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is, belo is, I'm sorry. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. It says, hear ye him. The Most High said, hear ye him. Okay? Hear ye him, meaning listen unto my son above Moses and above Elijah. Okay? Above the law and the prophets. Because he's going to come and give the true understanding of the law and the prophets. Okay? Not, not come and give his own way and change up everything and switch it up. Go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, read verse 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Christ said, don't think I came to destroy the law or the prophets. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He came not to destroy, but to fulfill the things in the law concerning him. The things in the prophets concerning him. He came to fulfill those things. Where it says he was a lamb led unto the slaughter. He came to fulfill that. That's what he came for. Read. For verily I say unto you. Till heaven and earth pass. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Till all be fulfilled. Not one jot, not one tittle shall pass from the law till all be fulfilled. You see that? Nothing in this law is going to pass. These things have to be done. We still have to follow these laws. Read. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Read. But whosoever shall do and teach them. We're going to do and teach these commandments. Read. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Because we want to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So we're going to do and teach these commandments. Read on. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because the scribes and Pharisees, they knew the law, but they didn't keep it. They were hypocrites. They were full of envy, hatred, malice. They had no mercy. Okay, read. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Thou shalt not kill. So them of old time, meaning the law of Moses, said what? You shall not kill. That's a law. But watch how Christ magnifies the law. Read. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Right. You were put to death for killing. Read. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm -hmm. So now not only... Not only are you being judged for killing your brother, you're being judged for your thoughts now, for your intent. You have hatred in your spirit for this brother. You got hatred for this brother. Now you're being judged for your thoughts. So now the law is being magnified. It ain't just because you, you killed the brother. No, you got the thoughts and the intents of killing the brother. You're guilty already of murder. This could, surely ain't the law being done away with. Mm -hmm. This surely ain't the, the law being fulfilled in Jesus. Surely. Read. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. Raka means this brother is uh, his brother is worthless. He ain't worthy of me reconciling with. He ain't worth, excuse me. He ain't worthy of me uh, 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 trying to fix and mend our relationship with. He's worthless. That's what recall means. Go ahead. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, 
shall be in danger of hellfire. Read. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. Right. Before you go and give gifts to the altar to the Most High, and, and, and petition the Most High for blessings and all this other type of stuff, you need to go clear these things up with your brother. You need to make sure everything is working out with your brother. All right? Everything is smoothed over. All right? Reconcile with your brother. Forgive one another. Jump down to verse 27. Verse 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. That you should not commit adultery. That's in the law. Okay? Read. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So it's not just because you actually went and had sex with another man's wife. It's the fact that you look at that man's wife and had the intent, meaning you want to have sex with her. You want to take that man's wife. You looking up at that man's wife with, the, with, the, with sexual intentions, with lustful thoughts. This is the law being magnified. Surely this ain't the law being done away with. Surely this ain't the law being fulfilled in Jesus. This is law fulfilled in Jesus. You could just walk around lusting after people's wives now. Mm -hmm. No. These Christians are liars. They don't know the Bible. Go ahead. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Re uh, jump down to 31. Verse 31, it hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. So Christ already taught this. He said, it was said by Moses, you can give your wife a bill of divorcement. Read. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, Causeth her to commit adultery. You caused that woman to commit adultery because you put her away. You put her away and she has done nothing wrong. You can't just put her away for that. Just because you don't like the way she cooks. Oh man, she can't cook. Every night it's beans and weenies. <laughs> beans and franks. Frank and beans. <laughs> Frank and beans with a little with a little easy mac. Nah. Can't put her away. Get her some cooking lessons or something. You're going to have to work that thing out. Because if you put her away, how long is she going to be able to remain uh, single? For the rest of her life, she's going to go out and deal with a man eventually. And then that becomes adultery. Okay? That becomes adultery. Read. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. And then that man becomes an adulterer. Yeah, Waffle House run. Yeah, Chef Frankenstein, death in the pot. Uh, uh, throw some ramen at him. Throw some, throw some ramen at him. <laughs> hey, hey, there's some good ways to make some ramen though. Hey, I'll tell you right now, there's some. Hey, I make some. I, I throw down on some ramen for real. I, I can make it, and I ain't talking about that that maruchin stuff, that maruchin crap with the high sodium. That stuff is deadly. Um, so now, uh, where we at? Continue. Again, ye have heard that it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. It says, you have heard that it has been said of old time, thou shalt not for forswear thyself, but shalt perform thine oaths. Meaning, back in ancient times, back in the during the time of Moses, you had to make, you swore that you would do something, and then you would have to follow through with it. You'd have to follow through with it. Not uh, not like how these people do today where they just say, I swear to God, I swear to God all the time, and then they be lying. No, you forswore yourself, you had to you had to follow through with what you said. Right? Now watch what now watch what Christ said. Verse 34. Verse 34. But I say unto you, swear not at all. Jesus said, Don't swear at all. It's better that you don't swear at all. We don't swear in Israel. Read. Neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, mm -hmm. nor by the earth, for it is, it is his footstool. Mm -hmm. Neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head. 
Now that you can't say I put that on my life. Damn. You know how people say that? Yeah. I put that on my mama. I, say that a lot. I put that on my life. That's what black people love to say. Blind ass black people. Lying ass black people. <laughs> Read. Because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Mm -hmm. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. It says, but let your communication be yea, yea, meaning yes, I did. Okay. Or nay, nay, meaning no, I didn't. Just tell the truth. Just be straight up. Yes or no. You ever ask somebody a yes or no question and they give you a long story? The Bible says you're a liar. When you do that, the Bible says you a liar. It says in a multitude of words, there's sin there. You ask your you ask your wife, so did you do this? Well, da, 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 a long ass story. No, no, no. Did you break this? Yes or no? Yes, I broke it. <laughs> Thank you. That's all you had to say. You act like you was gonna get a whooping or something for saying you broke it. That's why I be. That's why I'm like, what the? What like? What's wrong with people? I come home. <laughs> I come home. Well, no, I didn't come home. I woke up, and the bathroom door is leaning up against the wall. I'm like, what the heck? What the heck wrong with it? Now I knew the door was loose. I knew the door was loose. We needed to get some longer screws to put in the thing. I knew the door was loose, but I said, "Hey, what you do to the?" I said, "What did you do to the door? Did you did you did you pull it extra hard or something?" The door was already loose. Okay, but did you pull the door off? Did you pull the door all the way out the thing? Did like what you do? Uh, it was you know it was already loose, right? What did you do to the door? I was in such a hurry and I slammed it. <laughs> Okay, then. That's what happened to the door. Because we've been opening and closing it just fine. Up until you was in a hurry and you slammed it. Now the door is leaning up against the shower. <laughs> oh, man. My wife is something else. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> it says, reverse 37 again. But let your communication be. Yay, yay. Nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. So Christ came to establish a higher level of accountability to the law. Now we're accountable for these things. You're not only accountable for what you do, but you're accountable for your intent, your thoughts. You know you lusting after this woman. You know you hate this brother. You know you hate this sister. But now Christ said, you do that. You, you're a murderer already. You're an adulterer already. That's a higher understanding of the law. Surely these laws ain't done away with. These Christians are bugged out. Uh, give me uh, Hebrews 10 and 20, uh, 28. Just dealing with the, the law being magnified. Oh, I ain't even... All right, read that. Hebrews 10, 28. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. It says under Moses, there was no mercy. If there was two or three witnesses to confirm the evil that you did, you was judged. Read. Of how much sore punishment? Sore means it's a worse judgment. It's a worse punishment. Read. Suppose ye. Shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing? You see that? Under Christ, under Christ, it's a worse judgment, because he magnified the law. He magnified the law. But y'all sitting here thinking that he did away with the law in the Christian church. Y'all bugged out. Y'all crazy as all get out. Um... Read on. And hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. See, the spirit of grace is supposed to help you overcome your sins, give you chance, give you time, give you mercy so that you can overcome them and fix the issue. Overcome the hatred. Overcome the lust. Overcome all of these things that you're battling. Read. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. 
I will recompense, saith the Lord. Uh-huh. Vengeance belongeth unto the Lord. He's going to get vengeance if you ain't keeping his law. Read. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. And it says the Lord is going to judge his people. Read. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. See, these Christians, they got, they got it confused. They're thinking it's a beautiful thing to fall into the hands of Jesus. They're thinking he's coming back with kisses and hugs and candy and flowers and all that type of stuff. No, he's coming back with a judgment. He's coming back to bring death. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You better have your stuff together. You better have your stuff on point. Ain't got time to be playing. Give me um, Matthew 19. Go back to Matthew 19, read verse 9. Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. Mm -hmm. His disciples say unto him, if the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. The, the, the disciple said, "Dang, if, the, if 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 this is the case, we gotta we we gotta be stuck with the woman. It's good to not even get married in the first place." That's saying a lot about you, sisters. That's saying a lot. The fact that a top the top apostle, the top disciple, said that, "Dang, if that if we can't put him away." We might as well not even get married because sometimes, man, you women, y'all, y'all, y'all be doing too much. Y'all do entirely too much. Hard to deal with, even in Jerusalem. See, we say a lot of times, we say a lot of times, it's the Babylonian mindset in the woman. No, these women been jacked up before Babylon. For Peter to have to say that, there was something wrong with the women during that time, too. They was probably saying, it's that Roman mindset. <laughs> it's that Roman mindset. The women, I'm telling you, man. Woo. A woman, a woman, it says, a woman maketh, a wicked woman maketh weak knees and feeble hands. Suck the life out of a man. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen a good Strong, nice brother. Good brother. Get married and turn it to Skeletor. I've seen it. I have seen it. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it with my own eyes. Destroyed the brother. All right. Get me, uh, continue reading. That's, First, what the, that's what the top apostle said. That's what he said. This is the top apostle Peter, not the top apostle over there in New York, the dude who claimed to be. Bring it up. Verse 11. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying. Jesus said, I know it. Not all men can receive this. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, this is a heavy thing. I know all men can't receive it. Only the righteous are going to be able to deal with this. Go ahead. Saying they <laughs> to whom it is given. Even the son of God knew. These sisters, yeah, I know. I know it. I know it, Peter. These sisters are something else. Not all men can, not all men gonna be able to follow this. But you righteous brothers, y'all gonna be able to handle it. <laughs> Go ahead. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. So these are the three different types of eunuchs. You got eunuchs that were born that way. Okay, they were born with some type of uh birth defect. Birth defect. Thank you. Go ahead. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Some some brothers became eunuchs like like uh, the three holy children, Daniel and uh, and and Mishael and them, right? And Azariah, right? They um they were made eunuchs by Babylon. Okay, read. And there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs. For the kingdom of heaven's sake. And these are eunuchs who men who have said that I am not going to take a wife. Like the Apostle Paul. He didn't take a wife. Right? So those are the three types of eunuchs. You got the eunuchs that were born with a birth defect where or they were impotent in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Then you have some who had their, their member cut off. Uh, you know, Esau loved to do that to us in slavery. He loved messing with the black man's genitals for some reason. I don't know what the infatuation with black men's genitals is. But anyways, he did that. 
uh, that's another form of a eunuch. And then you have brothers who say, I'm not going to deal with a woman at all. Now, more power to it because not all men can do that thing. That's a powerful brother. That brother is powerful. <laughs> if you can successfully do that thing, it's powerful. Especially in this day and age. With the way that women dress and everything that's out here in the, in the world, you're powerful. Okay, go ahead. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. It says, if you can receive this thing, receive it. Read. Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Read that in Mark 10 and 13. It gives, it gives a little bit more insight to this situation, what happened here with the little children being brought. All right? It gives a little bit more insight. Read that, Mark 10 and 13. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. They said, why y'all bring these little, we over here talking as men. Why y'all bring these little kids over here to, uh, to, to, uh, into grown folks business? So they rebuked those who brought the little children. Go ahead. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, suffer the little children to come unto me mm -hmm. and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Read. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Meaning, you have to become as a little child to get the kingdom of heaven. Give me that in Matthew 18. Matthew 18 and 3. You got to humble yourself as a child. See, a lot of times brothers come in this truth, you'll be 50, 60, 40 something years old, and you think you know something. You know nothing. You know nothing. Because for 40 years, you was a nigga in sin. Yeah. For 50 years, you was a nigga in sin. You know nothing. You know nothing. So don't come in here and try to bring your worldly experiences into this truth. No. No, 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 no. You need to sit down, be quiet, and learn first. You are a little, you are, you are a newborn. You are, you are a fetus. <laughs> Okay, read that. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see that? You must be converted. Converted from that all them old ways. If you were so old and wise, how come you got four baby mamas? You coming to the truth of four baby mamas acting like you know so much. You don't know nothing. You got four baby mothers. Five. Three. Sisters got multiple baby daddies coming in with a big mouth, acting like they know something. You know nothing. And damn sure not know how to pick a man. Humble down as a little child. Read. Whosoever, therefore, shall humble himself as this little child. You got to uh, you got to confess that you don't know nothing that you're ready to learn all over again. You're ready to be taught all over again. Just like a little child is taught from their youth up, your you, your youthful training was wrong. Your parents didn't teach you right. The church you grew up in didn't groom you up right. So now you come here, you must start all over again as a little child, and start from that point and be taught all over again until you become of age. Read. The same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You see that? That's how you become great in the kingdom of heaven. You got to humble down and be taught all over again. All right? Give me Matthew 19 and 15. Let's go. Let's get back to Matthew the 19th chapter. Matthew 19, verse 15. And he laid his hands on them and departed thence. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. This thing stop. Just forget it. Just forget the whole thing. Just drop the mic. It is what it is. Let's, let's, let's move on. 
There's a mode on there that you can have it where it just automatically goes. But PC Builders haven't made it to that level of the game yet. Um, it says, uh, verse 17, right? You just read? Verse 17. All right, read it again. And he said unto him. Oh, no, read verse 16. Verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? It says, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Give me that in Matthew 25 and 46. Everybody going to get eternal life. But watch this. Read that. Matthew chapter 25 verse 46. Uh-huh. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Yeah, but some people are going to live in everlasting punishment. You see that? Everybody's going to get everlasting life. But some, their everlasting life is going to be in torments and punishment. And others' everlasting life is going to be in paradise. Okay? You just got to choose you this day. You got to choose you this day which one you're going to follow. Which one you want. That was it on that? No. Right, go ahead. But the righteous into life eternal. You said, but the righteous, they get life eternal. That's that paradise we're going to inherit. All right? So now go back. Go back to where we was at, verse 16. Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Uh -huh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. But if you're going to enter into life, keep God's commandments. Read. He saith unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Read. The young man saith unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? He said, I've done all of these things. What lack I yet? Read. Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So Christ said, if you want to be perfect, forsake, get rid of everything that you got. Sell it and give it to the needy amongst us. It ain't, it's not talking about give it to the poor man who's a crackhead. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about give to the poor that are following after this ministry, that's following after Christ. That's what it's referring to. It's not talking about give unto the ungodly, wicked. We don't, we didn't, we never moved like that. We only gave it to those who kept the commandments. All right. So he was saying, give, okay, give, sell what you sell all this excess that you got and give unto uh and give unto the believers that don't have as much as you, and then come follow me. And then you'll have treasures laid up for you in heaven. That's how you're gonna be perfect and get the everlasting life. Read on. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful. He didn't like that thing. He didn't like that thing. Read. For he had great possessions. You see that? He had great possessions. So you notice the commandments when Christ was naming them, he left out covetousness. He left out covetousness. Because that's what this young man was dealing with. The young man said, oh, I'm good. I kept all of those. He said, okay, well, I got one for you. Let's see if you covetous. Let's see if that covetousness is in you. And it was. Go to Matthew 6 and 19. See, we can all come into this truth and start to keep some of the commandments that come easy to us. But what about that commandment that you struggle with? What about that one that gets you? That's the one you got to. That's the one you got to worry about. Everybody ain't a thief. Everybody don't steal. But some people, stealing, that's your thing. Stealing is your thing. Everybody don't, uh, everybody doesn't uh, easily get offended and be ready to curse people out the moment they get offended. Everybody ain't like that. But some people, you are like that. You can't control your spirit. Some people are like that. All right? So everybody don't battle with homosexuality. But one of you might, and that's your spirit that you got to overcome and you got to battle with. This man right here, his just so happened to be covetousness. 
Same thing that Judas was dealing with. All right, read that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Read. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Right, because you can lay up all these treasures on earth, but what happens when you drop dead? Them treasures are nothing to you. They're nothing to you. What happens if somebody come and rob you? It's nothing to you. It's gone. Read. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. But when you lay up treasures in heaven, when you building up a good report with God, nothing can corrupt that. The only thing that corrupt that is you going back into your sin. All right, read. And where thieves do not break through nor steal. Uh-huh. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, that's where your mind will be. That's where your mind is going to follow. That's what you're going to be into. Wherever that where wherever your 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 you're building up. So if all you if all you can think about is work and stacking up money, that's where your heart is going to be. So when you die, that's the only thing you've built. Another man's company, another man's business, line another man's pockets. And then when you stand before the Lord, you have no works. You have no good name. You've built nothing. You've built no respect uh, amongst the most high. Because you've done nothing. All right. Uh, read on. The light of the body is the eye. Oh, that's it. Go to Luke 12. 33. The book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 33. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. You see that? It says, sell what you have and give alms. Read. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted. Saying the same thing we just read, read. For where your treasure is. If your treasure is in the kingdom of heaven, if that's what you want, if that's what you really want, read. There will your heart be also. Your mind will be focused on the kingdom of heaven, obtaining the kingdom of heaven. But if your mind is focused on the riches of this world, enjoying the fatness of this world, then that's what you're going to be following after. That's the only thing that your body's going to be focused on. Your mind is going to be focused on. All right? Give me, go back to Matthew 19. Read verse 21. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor. See, some of y'all got something that's just that, that one thing that's holding you back from perfection. Some of y'all got a lot more repenting to do, haven't been around. But a, a lot of brothers who've been in the truth and sisters who've been in the truth for years, you still got that one, you got that one or two things that's holding you back. Once you get that thing under 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 control, you'll be good money. You'll be good money. So keep working and keep building at that thing. Others, just if I'll tell you like this: if you ain't congregating and ain't going to a Sabbath, uh, a, a, a congregation every Sabbath consistently you got multiple things you working on because you ain't been because you you ain't been scrutinized by the men and the women around you yet you ain't been corrected as yet so if you just at the house chilling to yourself you got multiple demons that you battling i'm gonna tell you straight you got multiple demons you battling you better get your behind in the congregation so where people can help you get yourself right because you looking in the mirror all the time you how do you know how do you know if you battle with hatred or not? You're not you're not amongst nobody to hate nobody. You just in the comfort of your own home all day. But you got the, but that spirit is in you. You don't know it's there yet. It's dormant. You better get you better get into some of these schools so you can so you can see what you're really dealing with. Cause then when we get into the wilderness and now you're around people, you ain't gonna know how to act. You ain't going to know how to act. You ain't going to know how to deal. Read on. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, 
For he had great possessions. You see that? He loved his possessions, his worldly possessions. Some of y'all got stuff y'all hold on to. Listen, man, when you die, that stuff ain't going to mean nothing. Hoarders, just hoarding stuff. Just hoarding stuff for no good reason. Why you still got your high school letterman jacket? Your big behind can't fit that. <laughs> you still got... I remember my wife. My wife, she used to be on the drill team in high school. Back in her super slim days. Right? My wife ain't fat, so I can say that. She ain't fat now. But she was real slim then. Back in her super slim days, she was on the drill team in high school. And uh, I remember me and her, we've been together since high school. We've been together since her junior year in high school. We've been together. Okay, I was a senior in high school. We've been together that long. And uh, I remember years after we had kids and everything, and I'm going through stuff in closets. I'm like, why do you still have this bag with all this drill team stuff in it? She had old outfits, and all of this stuff is immodest, and it's too damn small. I'm looking, I'm like, what the hell? I threw all that junk away. I said, what you, what you storing up this stuff for? What the hell are you going to use this for? Are you going to pull it out and show your daughter years later? Look what mommy was into, a little mini skirt. Get this, get this garbage out of the house. Pom-poms. What the hell is this? Some of y'all still got some of that stuff. Y'all holding on to that stuff. You better get them demons up out your house. You still holding on to that old man you used to be. That old woman. They made me throw away my pom-poms. Yeah, we sure did. We sure, we sure did. <laughs> All right, give me that. Uh, where we at? Read that again. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Because he was covetous. He was covetous. Read. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. A rich man will hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Read. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You see that? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to to enter into the kingdom of God. The eye of the needle was a small door that you entered in through to come into Jerusalem. Okay, it was a small door. You can look it up in the Zonovan Bible, Bible Dictionary. It's not talking about uh, an, an actual needle. Okay, it's talking about a small door that a camel, if, you know, we use the camel to load our stuff on and we travel on a camel back. You could, you had to, to get a camel through that door, it was hell. The camel could not just come through that door. You had to get the take everything off the camel, get the camel to crouch down, and then go through. It was it was it was hard. So it said, just as difficult as it is for a camel, to, for the camel to get through that doorway, that small doorway, it's even harder for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. It's even harder because, um, like it's one of Drake's lyrics. Drake said, "I can't see heaven being much better than this." That's a, that's a lyric that Drake actually said. So when you start to live in the riches and the fatness of this world, you can't perceive that there could be anything better than this. Anything better than the current riches that you have. That's why the Most High is keeping a lot of you all away from riches, away from wealth. Because once you start to obtain it, you'll start to put God right back in that shoebox, put him under the bed, and then you only call on him in times of trouble. When you get sick. When stuff starts falling apart. But when it's all good in the hood, God don't exist. See, that's the mindset our people in. Read on. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? Mm -hmm. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. With men, it's impossible, read. But with God, all things are possible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Meaning you got to trust in the Lord. Before you go, before you go and overcome all these things, you got to first have faith in the Most High that you could do it. You first got to have your faith right, read. 
Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? It says, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What did Peter mean when he said that? Go to Matthew 4. He said, We forsook all. Matthew 4, verse 18. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I'll show you how to gather men. Read. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. They forsook their nets, and they followed him. Give me Luke, 4, uh, Luke 5 and 10. Okay, this is Peter. Luke chapter 5 verse 10. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. See, these, these brothers, James and John, they were partners with Peter in the fishing business. They had a business. Mm. They had a business. Brother's talking about, but I got my house over here and I got this over here. And it's just, I can't, I can't, I just can't come there and do the work. Man, shut your weak behind up. You weak. Read it again. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Uh huh. And when they had brought their ships to land, they brought their ships to the land, they docked their ships, they forsook all. And followed him. They left the ships. They said, well, I, we don't need these dang ships no more. The fuck? To hell with the shrimping business. That's Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump got rich off that shrimping business, didn't he? Yep. Listen, they left the business. The business, the part, and everybody went to follow Christ. <laughs> okay, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. They said, to hell with the shrimping business. We out. <laughs> Now, they wasn't catching shrimp. They was catching lawful fish and selling it. But they said, no, we're done. We're done with this. They forsook everything. Now, what have y'all forsaken for the truth? That's what you got to ask yourself. What have I forsaken for the truth? Some of you won't even forsake your wicked-ass mama. Huh? Some of you won't even... I got that from Captain Shemaya. Huh? Some of y'all won't even forsake a job. A job! Not even your business. Not your business, somebody else's business, a job that's hindering you from keeping the commandments. You can't get your Sabbath days right. You can't get yourself together. They, listen, they forsook all. They forsook all to follow Christ. What have you given up to follow Christ? See, the young man who wanted eternal life, he thought he was just going to get it because, you know what I'm saying, he, he wasn't a thief. He didn't have to steal. Of course you're not a thief. You're rich. He had great possessions. Okay? So what 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 what, what was his hang-up? His hang-up was the possession that he had. He was covetous. It was things that he didn't want to forsake. It was things he didn't want to let go. Okay? Go back to Matthew 19, 28. There's some things in this word you got to let go. Read tw uh, 27 again. Matthew. Chapter 19, verse 27. So Peter's standing by and watching this young man uh, uh, deny following Christ because he wanted to, uh, because he, he didn't want to forsake everything that he had. He didn't want to forsake his riches. Peter's like, I gave up my whole business to follow you, Christ. So what do I get? You know what I'm saying? What do I get? Read that again. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold. We have forsaken all and followed thee. I, we forsake everything. I, I, my business is gone. I ain't even got my boats no more. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I've been following you. What do I get now? Read. What shall we have therefore? What do I get? Read. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. That what, what Christ said right here was very heavy. He said, that's good that you've forsaken all this time.
but you're going to have to come back again and forsake everything in your next generation. When you when you come back through the generation again, you're going to have to forsake all and follow me again and again and again. And you're going to have to forsake all every time you come back up until I come back and establish the kingdom on earth. That's what he was letting them know. You're going to have to continue to forsake all. You willing to continue to do that? Then you'll sit on the, the 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. You got to continue with me. Let's get that real quick. Uh, that's Revelations 10 and 11. The deacons been bringing this thing out. The deacons have been bringing this thing out. I think Deacon, Mal uh, uh, Deacon Malachi went over it on the 3 o'clock class last Sabbath. The book of Revelation, chapter 10, verse 11. Go ahead. And he said unto me, thou must prophesy again. Again, meaning not just this time, but again, a later time, read. Before many peoples uh -huh. and nations and tongues and kings. You see that? He would prophesy again, talking to John, right? Talking about John. He was going to prophesy again. He was going to come back again and be a prophet again. Just like Elijah would have to come again in the end. Okay, give me Acts 1, verse 8. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem mm -hmm. and in all Judea and in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. When 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 are the disciples going to be able to preach in the uttermost parts of the earth? After the transatlantic slave trade, being regenerated during this time, and being able to go out and teach forth in the other parts of the earth, being able to wake up the northern kingdom, being brought back during this time. Yeah. So listen, this truth. This truth is, is God, is, is God inspired. What we're doing is God inspired. This is not uh, of man. Not a man didn't just wake up one day and say, hmm, I want to create something. No, these are the same men that was putting in the work back then, coming back again and just redoing what they've already done. All right. The thing that has been is that which shall be. Now go back to what we was at in Matthew. Verse 19, uh, 29. Matthew, chapter 19, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And everyone that hath forsaken houses. Forsook houses. Some brothers don't want to forsake their house. Go ahead. Or brethren. Some brothers don't want to forsake their brethren. Or sisters. Some of y'all don't want to get rid of your wicked sister. Or father. Some people don't want to get rid of their wicked fathers. Or mother. Or your wicked mama. Oh, wife. Some of y'all, and it's true, you move your mama into the house, into your house, and she disturbed and disrupt every damn thing. Get mama out the house. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What did it say? And what? Or wife. Or wife. Some of y'all got a wicked woman that you need to get rid of that you holding on to. Or some of y'all got a wicked husband that you holding on to. That's wicked. He's holding you back. He don't care about these commandments. He's not keeping the commandments of God. Read. Or children. Or some of your kids. Some of you got grown-ass kids living in your house that don't keep God's commandments. Show them the door. I'm talking about these grown kids that refuse to keep God's commandments. You got grown kids in your house fornicating. You got grown kids in your house eating pork. You got grown kids in your house stealing. Doing all manner of wicked, just lazy. Don't want to keep God's commandments. Don't want to come to the school on the Sabbath and learn. And get themselves right. 20, 24, 25, 28 years, 30 years old. Show them the door. Oh, but that's my baby and I'm going to be, I don't give a damn. Show them the door. Read. Or lands. Or lands. For my name's sake. For Christ's name's sake. For this ministry. Read. Shall receive a hundredfold. You are grown as man. Yeah. It says, if you if you forsake all of those things, you're going to receive a hundredfold. I Meaning you're going to get it back. You're going to get it back. Read. And shall inherit everlasting life. And that's the mark of a man or a woman who's going to inherit everlasting life. You're willing to forsake everything. Yeah, you're dealing with your grown kids now. Sister, how old are those kids? Sister Shoshana, how old are those kids? How old are those kids? 
How old are those kids? I need to know. You're on live. Twenty three and twenty one. Do they have any type of mental illnesses or physical disabilities? You know, black people, we all bipolar. That don't count. Bipolar don't count. <laughs> They got, they got, they got some physical or mental disabilities. Are they healthy in mind and body? Only one. The twenty-one year old is their age. Okay. Well, the other one, you need to give an ultimatum. Do you hear me? You need to give them an ultimate. Either you get right with these commandments and get yourself enrolled in a trade school or go to college or something, or I'm cutting you off. You ain't finna have these demons and wicked spirits up in my house. Hell no. Blocking the blessings. Nope. You better, you better lay down law. You better lay down law. Because they tell you, man, these kids, they'll take advantage of you. For real. Got seven, forsaking them all. It was hard, but it got to be done. They'll be all right. They will be all right. They're going to be all right. They'll go out and find their way in this world. Shoot, I have, I, I had to. Anyways, uh, read verse 30. Verse 30. But many that are first shall be last. And that many that are first shall be last. Meaning what? The first is going into those people who are living it up in this world. You're living good. You got your riches now. You good. A little bit of Grey Poupon. Mm. A little Chris style. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Got a yacht. See, some people living fat. Read. And the last shall be first. But it says those people that come first in this world that are living up high in this world and the world to come, they're not going to be on that level. They're going to be brought very, very low. And many of them ain't going to get the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be last. And then over here, it says, on the second part, it says, but the last, us that's poor, uh, I know thy poverty, but thou art really rich. Yeah. Then we're going to be first in the next kingdom to come. Because this ain't our kingdom. Esau is the end of this world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. All right? I done seen, I done seen a few rich, wealthy brothers come to this truth. They don't last very long. They don't last very long. They have certain issues that, that, that hang them up, you know? Certain, certain people that are covetous, they don't last in this truth. You got to overcome the covetousness, all right? Anyways, all right, y'all, that's the class. Most high Christ blessed. I pray y'all enjoyed it. Is there any questions on anything that I covered? Any questions? I'll answer a couple questions before I make moves. This ain't even a class I was going to teach. I was going to teach something else. But I left my notebook at the house this morning. So I had to do this one. <laughs> that's why you That's why you got to have multiple classes ready to go. Brothers got to be studying, man. You got to be studying. <laughs> got to have multiple classes, man, for real. All praises to the Most High. All praises. No questions? Um, will you tell me what scripture you read after Luke 5 and 10? Okay. After Luke 5 and 10, we... We read Luke 5, 10, and 11, then we went back to Matthews 19 and 28. Back to Matthews 19, 28. What, what is the laws for women? Okay, I can't go into that. That's a lot. So what you need to do is you need to go to the um, you need to go to the local Israelite school close to you. 
and get get a get a welcome home packet and learn uh start to learn from there okay start to learn from there there's too many for me to name there's laws on modesty there's laws dealing with uh many different things so yeah it's too much for me to go into right now but uh go to our website i think you can download the webs the uh welcome home packet from the website and it's got it's got a lot of information in there for new or newer people coming into the truth. Yeah. Israelunite.org and download the welcome home packet from the website. Hey, Lord's will, I see you, officer. I see you out there this weekend. Lord's will. Yes, if you have some type of physical ailment that's that's hindering you from getting to the school as much as you like, hey, that's just something that's just something that you got to deal with and uh, make it as much as possible. Okay, some people make excuses and don't go, but if yours is legit, that's you know the, the most I understand. All right, the most I understand. All right. Anything else? Nothing? Yeah, the most I took over, he said, yeah, you, you know, you going to teach the class. I want you to teach. <laughs> Basically. Oh, you live in Italy. Okay, so you live in Italy. Go on the website and download the Welcome Home Packet. Okay, the Welcome Home Packet, it's an introduction into the truth, and it's going to show you, it's going to, it has a, all the scriptures lined up on it. All right, so as soon as you go to the website, As soon as you go to the website, the welcome home packet is at the top. You can just download it and read it. What's going on with this thing? This thing's got the devil on it. Yep, it's right at the top. When you go to the website, right at the top, it says welcome home packet. You click on that and you just download it and that'll help you. That was it. That was it, Veronica. We just finished out the chapter. That was it. There was no more scriptures after that. Any more questions? That's it. All right. All praise to the Most High. Shalom. Shalom. We are out. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. Shoot, we had a storm come through Texas last night. It was rough. It was rough. My wife was all scared and stuff. Yeah, go to sleep. <laughs> all praises.